Welcome to my inn. The carriage rest inn. Mmm, it looks like the bod is about to begin. I'll pour you an ale over the stories, fables, and tales about Dorma's history and Vive's mystery. Let us see memories of Vive through his singular eye. So take a listen to the tales that we spin here at the Carriage Rest Inn. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Carriage Rest Tales. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Mike, and to my left we have... Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ryan. I will be playing Korgon, Slayer of Halara. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> With help from Theron, of course. <laughs> hey, everybody, this is Nick. Uh, I'll be playing Theron, the Drow Ranger. Hey, guys, it's Sam. I'm characterless at the moment. Uh, you might hear from me a little bit from Woods, but we're just going with the flow because R.I.P. Halara. So we're going to open today's episode back in the little hovel outside of Cave Town, where Woods and Nomis have been kind of holed up for a couple of months. So I think Nomis is going to... It's a lot to take in, I think, what we just saw. So... Halara, Halara was the reason I discovered my gift of light that and what led me to the order of light. I don't understand, like, this makes no sense because then that means, like, the night circle is also why you're alive, but isn't that what we're going to be f- yeah. against? Korgon and Theron technically saved me. Why? I mean, I, maybe they just really hated Halara. I, I don't know. No, there's got it. There's in like woods at this point is like pacing in the cottage now like there's got to be a deeper meaning to this like they would not I th- well i mean were they, what were they call- were they calling you vive so do you think halara somehow knew that if i died cuz <gasps> didn't he say something about if nomis dies if this dies then vive will die so you think we're so you think if you're not joined as one and one dies, the other just, what are they just like, poofs? Well, don't for lore, didn't we discover that? Because I saw you with Damien and I saw that one person, they had similar people in opposite rooms and they killed one of them and then the opposite person died. You were, so what he's referring to was- I don't know that though. You You were being observed. You remember being with Damien in his- facility and they were trying to take care of an Ivana citizen and then for some reason the Ivana citizen just died. Yeah. And now you're putting two to two together when Nomis is like, no, I remember seeing his so, equal on the other side and they were torturing him. So then we're so we're we're all connected. So if you're not so if your soul's not full, then you're at risk of dying. Yeah, I guess if you're connected. If you die on one side, you die on the other. So then Which don't, I don't know how this affects me now that I'm one. So so don't we want everyone to be connected then? I what? guess that's what we're finding out. Like I, I'm still trying I to process because I guess that was actually my memory because yeah. Vive wasn't there. Vive wasn't there. That was your memory overlapping now. So, which I had wait, totally so forgotten then, about. So hold on. Then what's tr- Then what's real? Like who? So who aren't the Order of Light trying to connect people? So isn't that what we want? Or do we not want to connect people? Well, who are we fighting for? I mean, we saw through Vive's memory the professor and Damien combine. So they're are we already combined? one. I, I am. Well, you you technically I am. I'm a, I'm, you fell unconscious once, but had no you had no orb. No orb during the fight with the Chaos God, yeah. So you might already be combined. So then why are we trying to stop people from being combined? Like are we in the wrong? I I don't know. This you is all. This is really know. heavy. You can't just not know, no, miss. Like this is a huge deal. Well, how how am I supposed to know? I this? don't know. I mean, I mean, not just you. I mean, like us. Like okay, it what? sounds like you were putting it on me. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not. I'm trying. I'm putting it I, on I don't all know. of us. Like, wh- how do we just not know? Like we've been here for how long? People, ha- how many people have died because we think we're doing the right thing? Are we doing the right thing? 
You start thinking through everything you've experienced in your lives up to this point about the order of light, its main objectives, close the rifts. That was first, save the citizens, then kill the Danoa. You're now seeing that there is an opposite side in Dorma where Vive, the professor, Grace, and the generals were abducting people, forcing them to merge into their selves, but their minds were getting shattered and broken, compelling them to always draw this symbol that just keeps appearing. Every one of them that gets merged always wants to draw this symbol. And you're kind of arguing and thinking through that and then Nomis starts to shake and lose focus, and Woods can tell that another memory is starting to resurface. Nomis, Nomis, tell me what's happening. After the dramatic fight against the traitorous Halara, Corgan and Theron return to the Iron Mist with an injured Ivana Grace. This being the first other half of one of the great generals, the professor was a little bit more cautious in how they were gonna do their merger. In his past trials, he had determined that the normal citizen's mind simply would not handle the strain of combining the experiences of two lifetimes, resulting in the poor soul's minds cracking, leaving them in a sort of insanity state. He was not gonna take this chance with one of his great generals. So for the next month, the Ivana and Dorma Grace sat together and talked. They talked and talked and talked explain their lives in as much detail to the other as possible. For a month, they sat there, night and day, only resting when exhaustion defeated them. Only then, after the conclusion of the month, did the professor allow them to touch, instantaneously merging their souls. The results were mixed. Grace was able to maintain her sanity, that was true, but too much of the great general had changed. She became softer, wanting to wear perfume, talking in sweeter tones, singing even. She began to show mercy. There was too much of the Ivana half in this new grace. She would still be useful, of course, but she no longer was the great general that he needed for the mission they were taking on. Next time he would do things differently. Next time he would break the will of the Ivana half before allowing the merger. Next time his great general would remain. So it's been about a month. You're back in the Dorma side. Vive is still away on his mission and General Grace is kind of at a commission at the moment. So, Corgan and Theron, you've been recruited into Grace's team, and you're going to help continue her mission. You find out that her mission has two pieces of information. One, you hear that the Ivana goddess Valdana sent word through her fairy that she gifted the wooden dagger to a magical Debaxi, instructing him to join the Order of Light where he would unknowingly become a mule to deliver the dagger to the professor. Second, you're going to start preparing the city of Black Bay Harbor for an attack. This attack's going to take place during the ceremony. That's still a few months away, but your goal is to start suing the seeds of chaos and fear to allow rifts to be opened easier. So with that said, Theron and Corgan are going to be in Ivana, You guys still have disillusion, so you can't stay in there the whole time, but you're gonna be working with team members of General Grace's crew. There was a swashbuckler, a barbarian, and an archer that you are welcome to utilize to your needs. Those are the characters Sam will be playing, so you can come up with names when you want to. Aye, the swashbuckler. So this is bringing it full back. If you remember in season two, we had talked about in season one, I was planting the seeds that things happened first and then rifts opened. Do you guys remember what some of the things that were happening around the times of those rifts being created? I think the first one I remember, we were in the marketplace and I was trying to rescue... It was Croco, Croco, of his daughter. Bella. Yep. So I remember that happening at the market. Yep. And I remember the uh, Chapaca farm. Somebody did some, somebody blew up the fence first. Yep, exactly. Someone blew up the fence first in the Chapaca farm. Uh-huh. For Which, Bella's, someone had lit a dye shop on fire. fire. And then the other one I was thinking about was your guys' first patrol, you had ran into somebody that died of Mordina. Oh, outside of the Outside the bar. of the tavern, bar. the dusty tavern or something like that. And they called Woods a witch because they thought that Woods had done it. 
so those are the three big ones that we know happen from our storyline. But what else would Corrigan and Theron have kind of done to try to sue those chaotic seeds, trying to basically make up evil unrest in the city leading up to the Festival of Lights? You said that it's like a month later? Yep. I was just curious. Was Vive or anybody curious that Halara didn't make it back? Oh. Do we need to roll that out or is it just like... So Vive is still out on mission. If you remember before you guys left on your mission, he had said he was going to become a stowaway on the elven city of Fire and Fly because he was looking to try to come up with some sort of leverage to force the elves to work with the Night Circle. Okay. So you guys meet up with, what's our first NPC name? Aye, the name's Nettie. All right. So you guys meet up with- Swashbuckler extraordinaire. As long as it wasn't like Falara or Malara. (laughs) (laughs) Alara. Alara. Did you say Netty? Uh, Netty. Netty. You guys meet up with a Netty inside Black Bay Harbor. You got your phase rounds and you're getting pretty proficient in traveling back and forth. And apparently you're meeting in the Harbor District. Netty. What is our first mission? What? How do you want to sue these seeds of chaos? Boys, are you ready to do some damage? Oh, I'm always ready to blow some stuff Aye. up. All right. You Let's see all those boats? We're going to make them go boom. Okay. All right. All right. Hoist the sails and get me over there. All right. So as you guys start making your way over to the boats, you see that some of the crew that are kind of watching over the port area sees this unmarked ship rolling towards them. I'm going to say that Nettie is very much like got a pirate flag going. And this is the introduction to the first time that the pirates are appearing in Black Bay Harbor. Yeah, Nettie's like on the, the tip of the boat, like <laughs> just like Captain Morgan stance with his um, his big sword in his hand. Hi, let's go! Knock the wind and (laughs) blow the ships. Do you know how to sail? No, I don't. All right. I'm going to take an oar and just... What are you doing with that oar? We're 20 feet off the water. (laughs) It's a big boat. (laughs) So I assume then you would see like the cannons kind of off to the side. You man the cannon. That's probably more up to my speed. Climb up up the net and get in the crow's (laughs) nest. Uh, okay. You're uh, shouting out outliers. Uh, up there? Yes, the crow's nest. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Listen. And I'm just going to start pointing the cannon like yes. where I think it should, should go, go. Yep. but I'm probably like overcompensating. That looks great. Make them go boom. Let's go, boys. And I'm just like hitting it. I've never yep. no, hit a cannon. <laughs> so it's dung <laughs> as you hit it with the axe. They're How do you fire in the crow's thing? nest? Just, he has no idea what he's doing. Just, yep, exactly. You're just staring out. Yeah. Like, Don't okay. you have an arrow? Shoot it out there. Oh, I, I was supposed to shoot arrows? What can, can kind you... of soldiers did they send me? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were experienced. Can, can you throw up a, a bow and arrow? Piracy is you look not up. our forte. <laughs> you look up there and there's a bow and arrow already oh, in okay. the crow's Here's, nest. Never mind. There's one right here. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and roll some initiative because Theron's in the crow's nest. You see that there is a boat that is getting ready to board your guys' boat. Uh, the the boat over there on, on, <laughs> the, on yes. the side. The left side. <laughs> <laughs> Take no that's prisoners. Starboard, right? starboard, yeah, I believe so. Starboard. No, that's right. Port left. Port left. Because it's the same number of letters. Uh, 19. The swashbuckler always goes first. Is that, is that a rule? <laughs> Tis now. <laughs> sure, that makes sense. I got a eleven okay. on my initiative. Uh, let's All right. see. Dexterity proficiency. So swash swashy is going first. I'm gonna say at this point, just to speed up combat and stuff, you guys have shot off a couple of cannons, so maybe two boats are on fire, listing to the side. But now the police guard, the harbor guard, has caught up and they are starting to board the boat. So I'm gonna say there's two of them that have boarded. Okay, um, the swashbuckler is going to, we take no prisoners! And he's gonna run towards the first person that boarded and multi-attack. Did okay. his voice change? Probably. <laughs> God. <laughs> Come on. He gets excited when he goes into battle. Now you roll 16 low. to hit. <laughs> 16 hits. Um, <laughs> now she rolls bad. Yeah. And six damage. Okay. Uh, no, uh, eight damage. Eight damage. Okay. We're going to do it again. Um, 11 to hit. That misses. Yeah, okay. Just like this, 
boys. That brings us up to Theron. So yeah, uh, Theron's gonna. Is there is there like fire? Can I do like fire bows? Yeah, we could say you're you're a ranger. So I'm gonna say you're proficient at making like a flint fire anywhere you need to be. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna be shooting with my longbow. Uh, I'll be shooting fired bows, okay. and I'm I'm gonna look on the other ship. That's about to board to see if there's any explosive nearby. Okay, go ahead and roll a perception check. Natty 20. You definitely see that under a tarp, there's maybe like two or three crates black powder. Okay. Uh, I was just thinking about a Wiley Coyote cartoon. There's just like 50 crates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, it's right there. Next to the handbell. Yeah. Uh, what would I add for a longbow shot? It's dexterity based. Be um, dexterity, plus your proficiency. Yeah, plus, plus your proficiency. Your proficiency. So, okay. Plus. All right, so he's going to shoot towards the, or he's going to try to hit the explosive. Yep, like it. Uh, 13. 13. I'm going to say that you hit kind of right next to them, but you see that it catches the plank on fire. So you know that in a couple of turns, it's going to make its way to where the explosives are. Okay. Okay. Don't you get and to attack twice as a ranger? Yeah, I, I got a bonus action. Okay, sounds good. Uh, have they set out like a plank yet? Yep, they had a plank. The one person is boarded. The other one's kind of like halfway across the plank. Okay, I'm going to shoot another fire bow at the plank. Okay. And set that on fire to keep All them right, from... So you're going to try to just light the wooden plank on fire? Yep, 10. 10? No, it's not enough. So you shoot down, but it kind of just hits the water right next to it. Corrigan, what are you up to? I did have fun with the cannon, but mm-hmm. now that I see there's people... On board, I'm gonna go attack them. So I'm using my non cat dice. Oh, yeah. I'm going back to my, I think roll I roll two. better yeah. when I roll two. So I don't know what it is. The actual roll. Yeah. The Solaris out here? It didn't work. It was the cat die. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said, the blue no, one. Non cat, I heard. All right. So I missed, summon it back, and I'm just gonna go charge and attack okay. somebody. Ooh, that one 20. Hit. 20 hits. Non natural. Eight damage. Eight. All right. You notice as you go and attack this person, you feel a lot of heavy armor on him. Like he's very heavily armored. Um, can I, how far away is he from the deck of the ship? He just boarded, so he's probably five feet. I'm going to try to shield bash him into the water. Okay. Nope. Okay. That brings us up to my enemies. The one that you just shield bash is just going to like try to punch you in the stomach for his first attack. Uh, a 17 to hit. Misses. Okay. And then as you kind of ducked out of the way, he's going to try to take advantage with his short sword to come down a 24 to attack. Okay, that hits. 11 slashing damage. Jeez. The other guy is going to push past you and attack the swashbuckler, or at least try to. Give it your best shots there! A 16 and a 19 for his two attacks. They... I have well, a question. So I have suave defense, so it's saying I can add my charisma modifier to my AC if I have light armor on or no armor. Yep, that would work for me. Okay, so it's a 19, so one of them meets. Okay, so the one you that... see within five feet of me. Yes. I would instinctively use my shield. shield. All right, so uh, 14 then. So both That's misses. misses yes. Okay, so he was about to ready to hit and then instinctively used your shield and kind of bashed it out of the way. He's going to, like, slap you on the back. Ah, thank uh, you very much. Right into the water. <laughs> and then you drown because you're in heavy armor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would not do well. There goes another one. <laughs> All right, Nettie. Tis Nettie's turn. How do we get paired up with this guy? So it's part of Grace's crew. I don't know what to tell you. Part of me actually uh, misses whole <laughs> Um <laughs> That's the plan. Da, 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 da. Sorry, I have a quick question. The goal is to blow the other ship up, right? The ship goal up. is to make a lot of chaos. Okay. So blowing ships up, lighting them on fire, okay, great. killing people. So I would assume we would have set like grease bags or like things like that. So like have a, definitely grease bags and stuff on the ship. Yeah. So I feel like um, so Nettie is probably gonna just like disengage and like start slicing some of those grease bags to like kind of go over onto the ship. Okay. I feel like we'd have them all rigged up, right? So that's Nettie's plan. Um, so you're disengaging. Yeah. I'm going to say, since you're trying to do something, I'm going to take an attack of opportunity. That's fine. Because you're trying to do things and disengage, which you can't really do. Oh, then I can just disengage. Uh, actually, read your swashbuckler. Can they disengage as a bonus action? Yeah. Because right. they're a type of rogue. Yeah, right? they're a type of rogue. I just thought about that. Yep. Yeah. So you disengage, and then you slice off one of the grease bags. Go yeah. ahead and roll a perception check to see if you notice the other boat kind of on fire already. Uh, What's perception? Wisdom? Wisdom. Eight. 
Yeah. You don't really notice that the other boat's on fire. There's like a railing in the way. But do you have a grease bag and you throw it on that other ship? Yeah. My, like my thought, it's on like a string and I'm going to cut it and it's going to go fling it over there. Oh, like, like a little the mini like catapult. Like catapult already. Yeah, like a catapult prep. kind of a thing that like we would have prepped. Like just tensioned. Yeah, catapult's the word oh, I'm looking for. Alrighty, I like that. Okay, yep. So it splashes onto the other ship. Yeah, perfect. And then uh, he's going to yell up, Up there in the nest! Light him on fire, boys! <laughs> and that brings us up to Theron. How much do you guys hate me? Like, just so much. I miss woods. <laughs> we all miss woods, okay? <laughs> okay, uh, so Theron's going to see the grease bag. Is the grease bag on fire? No. Okay. Well, that's your cue to light it on fire. Okay. Light it all on right. fire! So they aren't going to shoot at the grease bag. Uh, 16. So that lights up on fire. It's not like the front of their ship's on fire, and you know that one turn later, the back's going to explode. Okay. Hey, his second shot's going to be at the, the plank again. Uh, 24. 24 hits. So you definitely hit the plank, and it starts to catch up on fire. You know, it'll take a couple of turns to get to the point where people are, like, nervous about it. Yeah. Um, but for now, this kind of in the scuffle. They're not really noticing it. Corgi in. Is this heavy armor dude still, He's still by the rail? Yeah, he hasn't moved because you're in combat with All him. All right. Oh, I don't know what dice to use. <laughs> Do I, I have a bunch over here. No, you want to use one of mine? No. I was rolling like natty 20s. Don't need your pity dice. I'm going to attack him with my... I'm going to roll my crit by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hit him with my axe. 17 plus some stuff. Nice. You definitely hit him. Jeez. Nine damage. Hit him again. I think the tip... You got to let it roll off the pinky. Natty 20. Natty 20. <laughs> yes. All right. So I'm going to say that with your Natty 20, because I sense you're trying to push him off. You tell me, how are you pushing him into the water? Okay. So my first axe hit hit him like maybe like in the neck. So he goes to grab for it, and I like duck down and kick him in the back of the knee so okay. that he bends over, and then I just kick him King Leonidas style into the well, yep. into the water. And he falls into the water, and it's he's wearing heavy plate armor, and he just sinks right to the bottom. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Just like your fear as you're like on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, wait a minute. So I'm going to back up a little bit. <laughs> <clears throat> and right. is there another person nearby? Or Yeah, there's one that was was attacking Nettie. Well, I already attacked twice, I guess. Okay. My enemies. Um, he's looks a little nervous that his buddy just disappeared and now he's starting to get outnumbered. But he is a soldier, so he's going to just continue fighting. Um, he sees that you're also wearing plate armor, so he's going to try to push you in after his buddy. Well, I backed up. Oh, you backed up. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I clearly said I'm backing up. Oh, you did. Ledge. Yes, you did. All right. I did. You did. It's so, always good when the DM points at you. He, you did. <laughs> you, you, you did. My bad. So he's just going to attack you twice. Uh, a 14 to hit and a 21 to hit. Uh, the 21 hits. All right. 10 slashing damage, which you use your heavy armor. It's at 10. Yep. Ha! All right. And that brings us up to Nettie. So Nettie is like just kind of running around the ship, giving all these directions. And you hear, release the crows. And like you guys look over and there are probably like six or seven pretty decent sized crates of crows that are just squawking. Like there's probably 50 crows, 60 crows in each of these things. And all of a sudden these crows just go completely flying in the air and just like a just swarm the ship in the harbor. Just complete chaos. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to do something with Nettie next turn. But, okay. Uh, Theron, you now have some obstructions from your bow and arrows. Mm -hmm. But you can still fire away if you want. Okay. Um, does you see any more crates nearby? Nope, but you do sense that at the end of your turn, somehow, that the crates are going to explode. <laughs> okay. Don't kill the crows, man. Okay. Their souls are full. All right, so... <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he's actually going to shoot at the guy that's close to Nettie. Um, There's only one guy left on their boat with you guys, so that would make sense. Yep. I'll shoot at him. <laughs> Crit fail. Crit fail. All right. Um, you shoot Nettie. You have, to, you have to lean over the edge to get oh a God. good, clean shot. So you want to roll your percentile here. <laughs> uh, 93. <laughs> A 93. Okay. That's so, you dance show. so you have to really reach over to get a good shot at this guard. And then, unfortunately, as you're like leaning over, a crow just comes landing on your back, <laughs> just <laughs> teetering you just enough that you fall out of the crow's nest. And you think for sure that you're going to end up just face planting into the deck. But unfortunately, because of all of those grease bags that have been tripped up, your leg kind of gets caught up in one of them. 
<laughs> and it's the same time that Nettie like just cuts it and you just get whoosh, <laughs> launched out into the sea. <laughs> yeah. Landing safely outside of combat, but you know, you didn't take any damage. I told you, man, those crows are heavy because their souls are <laughs> I wasn't aiming at the crow. <laughs> And then as you're in the mid-flight, you just hear a big <laughs> as the ship next to you, uh, Nettie's ship explodes. You just hear <laughs> Nettie, ha ha, fire away, boys! <laughs> All right, Corgan. Uh, I'm still, I guess, attacking this dude on the ship. All right, sounds good. Roll off the pinky. Oh, off the table. Uh, 14. 14 misses. 15. <laughs> 15 misses. Right. I want electronic dice. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your dice ring? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah where is that ring. thing? I think it was cool. All right. So as you are... Oh, right, I want to shield bash him. Why not? 18. That hits. Seven damage. Okay. So you're in the heat of combat with this person, and then you hear Theron just... Ah! <laughs> and so he gets launched <laughs> off. I'm a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then as you like look up to kind of see what's going on, you see that Nettie has resorted to now like running around with their sword above their head just like slashing all of the grease bags. <laughs> another one! And another! But you notice that the grease bags aren't like flying off the ship. Instead, they're just pouring all over the ship you're on. And Nettie just is like, well, time for round two! And like just lights the ship on fire and then steers it towards a big group of boats that are already at the harbor. And then Nettie just jumps off. <laughs> Have you heard of the Trojan horse? <laughs> and just dives right into the water, like swan dive perfectly into the water. So, Corian, <laughs> you're stuck in all of your armor on a burning boat. And then you start remembering that you guys did put a lot of uh, crates down on below deck. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I would try to go find something to support <laughs> all my weight. Yep. So I'm going to say that. Go ahead and roll a survival check. Eleven. I would say that you find a like a dinghy boat that you can get into the water. I'm gonna have you roll one dexterity save to see if you can maintain balance on it because you're sitting real low on this boat. The worst feeling. Nine. Um, with your nine, you fall into the water and you're very terrified that you're gonna start sinking. But then you realize that by the time you had found the boat and you had got on it, you were actually pretty close to shore. So like you end up just being like neck deep, you like just head just barely above the water and you kind of just angrily slosh out of it. Nettie's like backstroking past you. <laughs> Cargan, to the shore we go. I don't like you right now. <laughs> and then we are going to close out to that scene as the harbor is now kind of on fire. People are chaotic and you do see that some rifts open up and Noah are starting to now pour in. But then you start seeing like the order of light kind of start appearing and you guys smash your phase rounds and go back into Dorma. Hey guys, it's your host and Dungeon Master Mike. I just wanted to take a second to thank you for listening to our podcast. It really does mean a lot to us to be able to entertain you guys and just have fun being a nerd. If you are enjoying this, please make sure to give us a five-star review or even better, recommend this to a friend that you think would enjoy this. We're really trying to grow our listenership and any help that you can give us would be amazing. Also, make sure to check out our website at carriagerestales.com. There you're going to find some fun things like maps, handouts, our sister podcast of one-shot adventures, and we even have our bonus practice campaign that we put together before we officially started recording to kind of work the kinks out. But it was funny, so we left it on there. If you're looking for more daily interactions, you're also welcome to join our Discord. You know, you can come hang out, just be nerdy with us, ask us DM questions or player questions. We can talk about stuff like books or animes, all sorts of fun stuff. But really, just thank you for being a listener and enjoying letting us just entertain your ears for an hour every other week. Thank you, and let's get back to the show.
All right, so who is the next NPC from Grace's crew that is gracing our presence? I see what you did there. Gracing <laughs> our presence. Name Rug. Jay, what does Rug look like? Rug Ogre. Rug very smart. Rug say no words. Okay. And he's also Russian. <laughs> Rug very tall. Very big. Rug likes vodka. Rug likes vodka. Rug say go. You go. Rug say stop. You stop. Easy. Mm. What's the we'll mission? See. Gentlemen, the mission to burn prison. We take it out. We kill everyone. We go home. Quiet. No fancy. Rug, you want to you wanna kill the prisoners instead of just letting them out to ca- chaos? Who are you? I'm, I'm part of your crew. Don't you remember me? My name's Whip. He just like smashes you in the face with his hand. No. <laughs> they All right. die. Go. Lead. Lead, lead way, Rug. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys make your way through the Harbor District, and you end up right outside of the prison cell. You do find it odd that there's only one prison in all the Black Bay Harbor, and it's only one building that looks very small to you guys. Like It looks like a warehouse in iron mist. Like mm. That doesn't look like the right size for a prison. Where are people? You. People might be in there. People inside building. People in prison, in building. <laughs> Rug's gonna pull out his great axe. Don't mock me. And just like, it's so sharp. And just like, hold it up to your face. Let's go. We not okay. enemy. They are. Okay. And he's just gonna <laughs> like, just walk through the door okay. with his great let's, axe out. What's uh? <laughs> so we're, we're waiting a waiting good a while, while before okay. we follow Rug. All right. So you guys hear <laughs> just, sounds of combat from we're inside. We're going to let Rug do. Just people screaming and slashing and just. When she says people, she means person <laughs> screaming. As you see this, like, I'm going to say teenage guard, this like <laughs> go flying through the window, like trying to crawl, but then just get like, dragged back in. <laughs> And then it kind of goes quiet for, we'll say, like three minutes. You can't hear doors opening and slamming, but you don't hear any more screams coming from inside the prison cell. Rug is going to walk back out. How did it go? <laughs> is it all clear? <laughs> you guys. Success, yes. Rug did job. Rug did good job. Rug, go home. <laughs> He's going to crush his face around and leave. Okay, sounds good. Where does General Grace find these weird <laughs> freaking people? I, I have no idea. I mean, maybe Halara should have been on General Grace because I, I think right? she would have had a he would have had a good time. Oh yeah, Rug and oh Nettie. Rug, Rug would have killed Halara. Oh, Quick. that would have been that would, <laughs> that have, been would fun. have been awesome. Rug would have been like Rug would have chopped Halara's head off. I can picture it now. Yeah, Rug in charge. Halara's in trouble. You guys go into the prison cell. <laughs> you guys go into the prison cell and you see like one golden shard from the guard that you saw trying to escape and everything. And then you go through the prisons and there's only 20, I think we had 21 prison cells. And out of all of them, there's only two golden shards. And you're kind of like, that's weird. <laughs> like, why? Yeah. Shouldn't there have been more people in here for yeah, a prison? No, it's like what? three people. There's like nobody in here. So, unfortunately, no rifts opened on this one because there was nothing really to generate fear or aggression or anything like that. So you guys crush your face rounds and that scene was quick. Yeah, that was a bust. <laughs> Throughout the next month, you guys are kind of just teaming up with random people from Grace's crew to do different things. But then you get word that a new recruit has entered the Order of Light. This new recruit you guys see on some of your excursions. And Corrigan, you immediately pick up that the new recruit is that same tabaxi that looks just like General Vive. And he is out in the middle of the park on display trying to seal a rift that was just created. And you see that Damien is watching and you kind of see him smiling out of the corner of his eye but he's not engaging he's not calling him vibe he's calling him gnomus 
this kind of goes back and forth for a little while. You keep seeing kind of throughout the streets doing patrols and all that stuff. You see him talking to some of the drunkards outside of a tavern and then they just leave. He doesn't get angry with him. He doesn't get upset with him. It's not the vibe you're used to seeing. You're like, oh, he's acting way more mellow than the person I know. You pass across a couple more times when you light a dye shop on fire and Nomis comes to save a bird person. He's saving people now. I, you don't have any idea what's going on. It doesn't seem like the vibe that you know. Everything you know about vibe is just completely opposite for this person. As you guys are jumping back and forth between Ivana and Dorma, doing all these missions, having to kind of rest up your souls, you start realizing that the symbol that all those truth seers are drawing, it seems to line up really well with the big volcano that's right next to Black Bay Harbor. See, on the Dorma side, it's an active volcano that spits up ash and lava is flowing. It looks like the top two thirds have just been blowing off. But then on the Ivana side, it's just like a dormant volcano where only the very, very peak is missing of this missing peak. The terrain is so different between these two. And you start putting together that, oh, what these true seers are seeing is they're overlapping this volcano on one side and the mountain on the other side. They're not complete, they're not compatible. It's breaking their perception. Then Grace finally enters again. She's now starting to take over leadership. It is starting to not be quite as chaotic. Your targets are a lot more specific. You are actually targeting that gnomus person. At one point, you make a distraction so that she can infiltrate his barracks and look for that wooden dagger. She doesn't find it, but unfortunately finds his roommate, but quickly dispatches him to Dorma. She also directs during that same time, one of the true seekers, the most sane of them as possible, is going to try to win Nomis over, confuse him, make him want to leave the order, take him on a tour. During this time, Damien's trying to recruit Woods, a true seer that seems to have all of her sanity. He's trying to figure out how she didn't go insane. What is special about them? Nomis remembers looking down in the skylight, looking at the experiment going on. But instead of the elf on the table, he sees himself, because now he's Vive looking down at Nomis strapped to the table, tormenting him, teasing him. He then remembers the searing pain as his blood was drawn and Vives was injected, a microdosing of the merger, forcing them to see each other's memories. Nomis then begins to crack as he remembers the months being locked in isolation, tied to the table, getting these micro doses of Vives' past, sharing his past with Vive, they're tormenting Nomis, keeping him awake, not letting him sleep, depriving him of food, not enough to cause physical pain, but doing anything they can to break his mind. I think after all that that he saw with the flashback, I think he would look at Woods and then just start crying like heavily. Yeah. And while sobbing, just say, what if, what if Vive is actually stronger than me and takes over? What if I become evil and kill everyone? What if I'm not me anymore? I, How do I get him out of me? I don't, I think- Or am I destined to carry out his mission to destroy and break free whatever prison he was in? Is that what they were trying to do? Were they trying to separate or trying to join? I mean, I'm joined. Like, how do we separate you? That's what I'm. Now I'm so nervous that. But I. He's back here. Like he's he's part of me. But if I'm joined, they said I was joined. That I'm I'm a truth seer, and I didn't go crazy. So why did I merge successfully, and why do you have thoughts of both? I I, I, I don't know. Go ahead and roll a history check. You had that weird dream when you were younger. So maybe it happened to you when you were You're young. Uh, 18. Yeah. As Nomis kind of just pointed out, you remember distinctly meeting your other half as a baby. So as you a had a young child. You had no memories. You had no, you mustn't have had any good or bad in you at I that just was. when you, you were just a, just a baby. You were just a, not evil, not good. How could you have been as a baby? I don't. I don't know what this all means. 
and I don't even know where we're supposed to go. And you don't understand how terrified I am. That I, Vive is going to come out and kill you. Yeah, but you're strong. Like. I don't think I'm as strong as Vive. I think you from are. From everything we've seen. I think you have willpower. And it doesn't seem like he does. And that's what's keeping it at bay is because you don't and want it, it to doesn't. come out. For some reason, one of the memories kind of re back in your mind. And you remember that when Damien first merged, the first thing he asked was, if you see an old lady drop a coin and not notice... What do you do? Yeah. What would you do if some old lady dropped a coin? She didn't realize it. What would you do? I, I don't. Why are you asking me this? I'd, I'd pick it up and give it to her. So maybe the goodness in you is more dominant than whatever. Well, what would that- you do? Hmm. Another memory for Nomis to hold. But there's more still to be told. Hey guys, it's Mike, your host and Dungeon Master at Carriage Rest Tales. I just want to say thanks for taking the time to listen to our podcast. It really means a lot to us. If you are enjoying the content and you haven't already, please give us a five-star review. It's really going to help us grow our listenership and be able to reach more people. I also want to give a special thanks to Tabletop Audio for providing the background music for today's episode.